A virtual meeting of Asia-Pacific trade ministers is underway, beginning the annual APEC summit. Malaysia is hosting this year's talks online due to COVID-19 travel restrictions. Top of the agenda are special measures to drive post-pandemic recovery, as well as trade and investment priorities. While well, the series of talks lead up to the APEC leaders' meeting on Friday, when member nations are expected to set new targets for the economic bloc. And uh, Afifa Arafin is in Kuala Lumpur and she joins us now to tell us more. So Afifa, are there any indications what are some of the extraordinary measures uh, they're going to use to drive um, post-COVID-19 recovery? That's right. So trade ministers from the 21 uh, APEC member economies are currently in a virtual meeting, the first of its kind for this annual APEC summit. In fact, Malaysia's uh, trade and industry minister, Azmin Ali, has just concluded his uh, opening speech. And of course, the key focus of this year's APEC meetings uh, will be on how to drive post-COVID-19 economic recovery and prosperity. Now, we have to bear in mind that at the last APEC meeting in 2018 in Papua New Guinea, uh, APEC economies were riding quite high on their robust economic growth growth and outlook. But it is a completely different uh, scenario today. The region's uh, healthcare as well as its economic systems have been very battered by the pandemic. There are millions of small businesses that are fighting for survival and unemployment is at a new high in many of these economies. So in July, the APEC trade ministers had actually agreed on a joint uh, declaration recognizing the importance of continuous uh, flow of uh, trade even during this pandemic and to facilitate the flow of essential goods such as medical supplies and equipment. Uh, Malaysia's uh, Trade Minister Azmin Ali has also urged his peers to continue boosting multilateral cooperation in order to achieve um, sustainable economic growth. And he noted that there's a very strong need for Malaysia, which is uh, hosting the APEC summit for the second time, uh, to lead the region in addressing this crisis. But as we know, uh, the country itself is facing its third wave of COVID-19 with cases uh, recording more than a thousand new cases over the last uh, four days in a row. And Malaysia is also hosting the summit at a time when the current government is facing political uncertainty. Uh, the parliament is sitting for its third time this year and as we know lawmakers are currently debating the country's 2021 budget which needs to be passed so that resources can be swiftly allocated on the ground but more importantly it needs to be passed so that the government is able to remain in power. Uh, Afifa, what else uh, is on the agenda in the coming days then? All right, that's right. So more meetings uh, at the senior official level will continue to take place. The APEC officials uh, have also started work on the leaders' declaration. Now, that is a document which has remained elusive for the past two years due to a lack of agreement. Now, if you recall, in the last APEC uh, meeting in 2018, there was no joint uh, communique that was issued in Papua New Guinea, and that was because of the U.S.-China uh, China trade tensions. And last year's meeting in Chile was also called off due to domestic unrest. So at this point, it is crucial for uh, leaders who will be meeting on Friday for the APEC Leaders Summit to issue a joint declaration. And as the host, Malaysia said that it is committed to coming up with a strong declaration this year. But on top of this, you know, the 21 members are also expected to launch uh, what's called the Region's Post-2020 Vision. And that's a declaration that will guide the forum's work in the coming decades, especially um, in terms of revitalizing trade, investment, as well as regional cooperation. Um, and on this, you know, Malaysia's trade minister, once again, Azmin Ali, has said that it is currently being refined, adding that as a host, Malaysia will propose uh, for the vision's name to be based on a place or a location in the country. And he noted that the name will become a reference point uh, similar to the Bogor Goals, which was introduced in 1994, which this post-2020 document will be replacing.